Hello everyone, in this video tutorial, we will learn about Generative AI. Generative AI is very popular these days. Many startups are working on Generative AI, creating their own chatbots, image generation tools, and video generation tools as well. In Generative AI, we generate some new data, either it is in the form of text, audio, image, or video frames. So, if I have to explain the concept of generative AI to some kid, I will be using the following example. Consider I give you 10 different books that are related to dogs and you learn everything inside these books within a month. So now you are a generative model or I can say you have become a chat GPT model for dogs. So if I ask you a question related to dogs, you will be able to give me a response. For example, if I ask, tell me about dogs or what dogs like in terms of food, you will be able to give me multiple different answers. This is how basically generative AI models are trained. In generative AI, the main purpose is to make accuracy better. So re reinforcement learning to human feedback is being applied so that we can uh, make the accuracy better. So let's explore more things about generative AI. So here you can see the diagram and I will try to explain you the generative AI through using this diagram as well. So before we go towards this, you all have heard about ChatGPT. So ChatGPT is a large language model and it is based on generative AI techniques. What we do in generative AI, we generate some new data. Either it is in the form of images, audio or video frames or it is in the form of text as well. So you all have used ChatGPT. So if I ask ChatGPT to write me a poem or do, to do text summarization or translate this text into some other language, ChatGPT will do all these tasks. Okay. Or if I just ask some question about uh, uh, quantum physics, like what is quantum physics? ChatGPT will tell me that quantum physics is this, 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 okay? So, ChatGPT is generating some text or generating some data. So, in generative AI, we generate some new data, either it is in the form of text, audio. So, ChatGPT is a large language model and it is based on generative AI techniques. So, here you can see the diagram. So, you can see that uh, here we have all this is artificial intelligence and machine learning is the subset of artificial intelligence. And deep learning is the subset of machine learning. You can see the green line over here. And generative AI is the subset of deep learning. So generative AI is the subset of deep learning. And you all have heard about supervised machine learning. So or you have worked with supervised, supervised machine learning algorithms and unsupervised machine learning algorithms as well. In supervised machine learning, we have labeled data. And supervised machine learning involves tasks like classification, regression, forecasting. In unsupervised machine learning, we have unlabeled data. And some of the unsupervised machine learning algorithms include k-means clustering. So when we train a large language model, for example, uh, as a large language, chat GPT is a large language model and it is based on generative AI techniques. So when we train the large language model, we have a huge amount of data and we cannot expect the labeled data. So our data is in unlabeled and it is unstructured format. Okay. While in supervised machine learning, we have labeled data and in unsupervised machine learning, we don't have the labeled data. So you can see that a large long in, when, we, when training the large language model, we don't expect to have the uh, labeled data because we require a huge number of data to train the large language models. We can gather the data through website, uh, blogs, tutorials. So data is completely unstructured and we cannot expect the data to be structured and in, to be labeled when training the large language models or any generative AI model as well. So let's explore the large language models. So large language model examples include ChatGPT, Google Bird. Okay. Why we call them large language model? Because they are trained on a huge amount of data plus Due to the complexity of their neural networks, we call them large language models. Okay, and large language models include ChatGPT, Google Bird, 
large language models are trained with huge amount of data and it is unstructured data it is not a labeled data so okay so in case of machine learning i hope you have all worked with different machine learning algorithms like uh, decision trees random forest so in case of machine learning you know that we train the machine learning model for a specific task like whether if you want to classify the tweets whether they are positive tweets or negative tweets or if you want to translate the text, if you want to translate the text from French to English or in some other language. So you can see that we have, we can train the machine learning model to do a specific task, only a single task. Like either it can classify tweets, whether a tweet is positive or negative or translate the text from French to English. But what makes LLM's large language model so powerful? In case of large language model, one model can be trained for a whole variety of tasks. So we can train the large language model for multiple different tasks like uh, large language models can do copywriting, text summarization, text translation, copywriting, it can write points for you, it can write some letter for you. So it can just prepare your uh, script for writing, it can do script writing as well. It can write stories you can create some stories as well using large language models so large language one model can be trained for a whole variety of tasks so a large language model can be trained for a whole variety of tasks while in machine learning uh, each model can do a specific task but in large case of large mod language model one model can do a whole variety of tasks like chat copywriting text summarization translation and copywriting points as well so large language model is a subset of deep learning so you can see that a large language model is a subset of deep learning okay so you can see over here as well uh, this green represents the uh, deep learning and here we have the generative ai so you can see that large language model is a subset of deep learning and it has some properties merged with generative ai so in case of generative AI, we have generative image models and generative language models as well. And a large language model basically belongs to generative language models. So generative AI is a very broad topic which include uh, basically generative image models and generative language models. And large language model belongs to generative language models. So large language model is a subset of deep learning and it has some properties merged with generative AI as well. So as we have learned that generative AI is the subset of deep learning. So in deep learning, we have generative models and discriminative models. Generative AI will be the part of generative models. Discriminative models do tasks such as classification, prediction in case of gen discriminative models the model is trained on the labeled data so discriminative models include artificial neural network convolution neural network recurrent neural networks lstm and other models as well okay while in case of generative models we have generative language models and generative image models so chat gpt is the part of generative language models so in case, of, in case of generative models, we do not do classification or prediction. In generative models, we generate some new data. Either it is in the form of text, audio, images or video frames. For example, you can predict a new word in the sentence as well. Suppose we have trained the generative model on a huge Wikipedia database. So it will be able to tell me different kind of answers as well as it can also do sentence completion as well. So it can help you to, uh, it can help me also to generate a new data as well. Another example, let's say we have a generative model which has been trained on some music data set. So it will be able to generate its own music or you just give some part of the music it will be able you to give you the output of the new music itself as well. So let's see where does generative AI fit. So generative AI is a subset of deep learning and generative models are trained on a huge amount of data. While training the generative models, we don't need to provide label data as it is not possible when we have a huge amount of data that it can be labeled. So we can't label the is huge amount of data 
So in generative AI, we just try to find the relation between the distribution of the data. So in generative AI, we get give unstructured content for the training purpose. So in generative AI, when we train the generative models, we uh, as we require huge amount of data, so we can't expect the data set to be labeled. So our data set is unlabeled and as well as it is unstructured as well. So in generative AI, we just uh, try to find the relation between the distribution of the data. So let's take an example of discriminative model and generative model as well. So let's first look at discriminative models example. So for example, I have some labeled data of music. I have some labeled data of music. I have trained my discriminative model on this data and my discriminated discriminator model will be able to classify whether it is a rock music, whether it is a classical music or whether it is a romantic music. So this is basically kind of classification or you can say prediction. So in case of generative model, I will be training my generative model on different kind of musics. We don't have a label data. I am just training my generative model on different kind of music and then based on the distribution, our generative model will be able to generate the new music or it will be able to complete the music line. So let's say I'm giving some initial tune to my generative model. My trained generative model will be able to complete the remaining tune. So remember, when we talk about generative AI, it means that we are creating some new data. So when we talk about discriminative, discriminative models, it means whether we are doing classification or prediction. In generative models or in generative AI, we create some new data, either it is in the form of text, audio, images, or video frames. So here we have the training process of generative models. So First, we have the data. So in case when we train the generative models as generative models are trained on a huge amount of data, so we don't have the labeled data. So we have unstructured data uh, or you can say unlabeled data for training generative AI models. So we just pass this unstructured or unlabeled data to generative AI models and our generative model learns pattern and distribution in this unstructured data and generate some new data okay so in generative ai the main purpose is to make accuracy better so the human supervision is also required so the reinforcement learning through human feedback is also applied in the next video we will see how chat gpt is trained so in this topic reinforcement learning through human feedback will be covered in more detail in the next video as well so let's see how we can distinguish between generative AI application and non-generative AI application. So in case of non-generative AI application, our output will be in the form of number like 0, 1 or probability or category. So this will be like or the classification. So this all belongs to non-generative AI application. While in case of generative AI application, we will be generating some new data. Either it is in the form of text audio, image, or video frames. So that's all from this video tutorial. I hope you have learned something from this video tutorial. See you all in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.